this is fine. I don't even worry about it. Hey guys, long time no see, and I've been pretty busy this summer working on the van build. However, it is taking a lot longer than I had anticipated. I'm kind of doing like a ground up restoration, and I'm doing a lot of interesting modifications, like more than I thought I would be doing, um, but I'm having a lot of fun with that. However, I am missing riding the TW200 and camping and stuff. So I got it loaded up with the Forerunner and I've been itching to get out further uh, to explore some new places that I haven't explored before. Because the TW200 is cool, but uh, it's not great like on the highway and there's some places like it's just hard to get to or you can't even get to them uh, without hopping on long highway stretches. And also while I'm working on the van, I went ahead and just did a quick, interesting little camper setup in my Forerunner. It's not 100% done yet, but I have some really cool stuff to show you guys uh, that I think you'll enjoy seeing. And that brings us uh, to this video sponsor which is Jackery. They sent me their Explorer uh, 1000. This thing has one kilowatt hour of power, which is uh, pretty hefty. It also has a constant 1000 pure sine wave inverter, and I think it can do 2000 watts peak. Um, so you can run quite a lot of stuff with this. And making YouTube videos, especially going on like trips and stuff, I, uh, you know, need a lot of power to charge a lot of my devices, uh, especially at drones, because those guys are pretty hungry and they take a lot of power, but there's a lot of cool stuff uh, you can do with this. So I got everything loaded up and we're going to go do some camping and riding. And I think actually it's going to be more like glamping, but uh, we're going to put this thing through its paces and see what it can do. So let's go ahead and head out to around Breckenridge and have some fun. There's a lot of cool trails out there. time and instead of the normal Saturday Sunday uh, that most people get off I get Sunday and Monday off. It's actually kind of nice because everybody's kind of going home after the weekend and it's a lot less crowded. Yeah, see everybody's going home. All right here's our turn. Hey okay, we're immediately on gravel. Apparently there are all kinds of uh, trails back here. Oh, this looks like fun. Ooh, I don't know if I can get through here. Ooh, might hit the, oh, I hit something. That's no, not that bad. Place, not a real place to turn around, I don't know gets better up there or not but, but I'm just gonna head back to the other camp spot mm -hmm. it'd be a lot more fun to ride the TW on this anyways yeah this spot right here should be fun Here we are guys, nice and level. I just used some rocks I found, put under the tires. This should be pretty good. So I actually got a 12 volt fridge. This is the first time trying it out on a camping trip. But the first thing we wanna do is uh, take it off the vehicle power. Just go ahead and plug it into the jackery here. All we gotta do is hit the DC button once, turns on, should power the fridge. Hide the wire underneath my bed. And I will say, it is quiet out here. There's like nobody here. You know, it would be the worst thing ever if I had forgotten the TW key. <laughs> and I couldn't even write it. I might just hotwire it at that point. Alright 
guys, let's go check out that road that I was driving up before. We're going to be there in no time. Oh yeah, so much faster on a bike. So much more fun too. Everything isn't like constantly shaking. I think this is where I decided to back up on the Forerunner right about here. So Webster Pass is that way and Redcone Pass is this way. Uh, we'll ride a little bit longer. Let's go this way for now. We have a lot of stuff to check out tomorrow. Ooh, I could have camped right here. Probably, I would have been okay if I came up here, but I'm pretty happy with where I'm camped. Plus we got a nice little lake right next door. It's so dark and I don't know this area at all. Nice little chair just here, right here. This little lawn chair. So I'm just gonna probably ride maybe another five minutes or so and then head on back. Oh yeah, really quick. I thought it was darker than it should be, but I just forgot to turn on my light bar. Definitely helps. So comforting. Uh, it's so dark and spooky. Let's open the hatch. And check this out. Got some ambient lights and the main lights pretty nifty i even got ambient lighting running right there just for fun uh but check this out we can actually change the color temperature of the lights if you want a nice uh kind of amber color turn it off and then a bright cool white the color temperature kind of changes on the phone so it's kind of hard to tell but we'll go back to the middle and we can also change the brightness. Make it super dim, make it super bright. Turn those lights off and the switch behind it turns on the hatch light that I put on. Lights up this whole little area. And so the cool thing about these lights is that they will not kill the car battery. Uh, they run on one of those smaller USB uh, power banks to like charge your phone and then the car automatically recharges it when it's running so it's like all kind of automatic and then you just have the switches back here i'm not going to go like super into depth about building this i'm going to have a whole separate video on my other channel and of course we could easily power that on the jackery if we want it to with this thing these lights would be able to stay on full blast for probably like two weeks straight but i just made it in a way so there's no wires anywhere to be seen in it just works but going back to the jackery where we were gone uh looks like we've used two percent on the fridge up there right now it's not on because it kind of cycles on and off we we'll probably run that fridge for quite a while on this jackery which is good but anyways moving on to the other parts of my build um i got this uh, little roof net and i actually had to make these holes and then this is uh, screwed into the inner skin of the body and then the front ones just go on the door handles. And this is cool because you could put like clothes or blankets or pillows up here. Or just whatever you want to get out of the way. Or if you have like wet clothes, this would probably be pretty good because it's a mesh. And it's got a little compartment right here. You can put like your keys and stuff. And in here I have my stealth window coverings. These ones are for the front. Oh, and by the way, the stock light still works. So just leave that off because I don't really need it. But we can make this thing super dark from the outside. I just made these out of that Reflectix and I just put uh, gaffer's tape on the outside. And I love the way these Forerunner windows are because it's easy to just stick this in here and they're not ever coming out. Yeah, I got all the window coverings in and I got some nice little curtains with magnetic clasps in the middle. Kind of go together. Um, it works pretty well. But it looks like my uh, fridge just kicked on and it's only pulling about 30 watts. Yeah, these things are pretty cool. This is the smallest 12 volt fridge with an actual compressor that I could find. Uh, it's got a little USB thing and 
you can adjust the temperature you can go all the way down to negative four and this thing works pretty well i've been going off road and bumps and inclines and all kinds of stuff and it was running the whole time i was driving eco mode and regular mode as well the eco mode just allows it to get a little warmer before it'll kick on again but got some drinks oh nice and cold and some food in here as well but i'm just gonna grab an energy drink even though it's late i'm kind of a night owl um, just let you guys know but i'm gonna be working on some stuff cheers that's actually uh starting to freeze a little bit we should probably make the temperature a little higher this thing probably isn't exact so i might get a thermometer and stick it in there and see how it kind of works but we'll just do 39. the next thing that i did was install this little uh computer fan this thing runs on usb and this was an actual vent that vents to the outside so when you like slam the doors uh it doesn't you know mess with your eardrums and stuff like that but i actually blocked this vent off inside of here and then this vent is kind of like taking over so it can still vent out and it goes down to the bottom and i'll show you down there in just a moment but we'll just uh plug the fan into the jackery here this thing comes with two regular USB ports and two USB-C ports. But this thing has a little adjustment. It's kind of buried under there where you can go low, medium, and high. I just leave it on high. But it's so nice to have some ventilation in here, just like bringing in fresh air. And I currently have some masking tape uh, blocking off a bunch of little holes in here. And I actually have rib nuts that go into the body. And this is what I'm going to be working on later. I went ahead and did that just because I had everything apart. Um, but I'm actually gonna be building a custom counter and uh, cabinet assembly right here. And it'll be removable and everything. And it's basically just gonna be leaning up against here. It'll be a bunch of aluminum spacers uh, that go in there. And that way it just puts all of the force on the actual vehicle body instead of all the plastic. And I'm also gonna have a sink right here. And that is what this thing is for. I already installed the sink drain and this goes all the way uh, out the bottom. I'm not messing with like a gray water tank, to be honest. Um, where's that? Oh yeah, it's right there. It goes out of that little vent. You can kind of see it right there. And then just drain here and kind of drip down. Super stealthy, but I got a nice stainless steel bar sink and it'll fit great right here. And I got one of those USB uh, water pumps with a faucet. Those things are pretty neat and inexpensive. That's what I'm gonna be using, but it'd be nice to have like a pretty deep sink. And then this will just hook up to that. And that way I can just brush my teeth in here or wash dishes. And I can even kind of stay on the outside and do stuff as well. And then along with this fan, I have a another little fan here. It's pretty cool, I can just hook this on. But I just take that off when I'm driving or else it bangs into the window all the time. Oh yeah, and you may be wondering about this thing. This is a two kilowatt diesel heater. It's not fully installed yet, but uh, I actually made a custom flange. You can see it right there. I basically like cut a slot and then put that in there and welded it all the way around. And it's all rust proofed and everything like that. But all I have to do is kind of come up with a fuel tank that's gonna be underneath. And then I got the controller already wired up with the wiring back behind here. And you can see where it is down below. I kind of just have the ports covered right now. It's, the big ones are the exhaust and the intake for the combustion, you know, so you don't get carbon monoxide on the inside. And then that little red one is the fuel port. And right there, I have the wire all ready to go for the fuel pump that's gonna be mounted under here as well. But I really need to work on the van more. Um, and then once winter hits, I can kind of finish that up, actually try it out. I think it'll be pretty cool, but I'm hoping I will be able to run the diesel heater because um, it does need power on this Jackery. The 12 volt uh, DC output on the Jackery can do 10 amps. So hopefully that will be enough. The main thing is the glow plug in these things. They might spike the current you know, up pretty high when they first light. But I know once you get these things running, 
and it's all warmed up, they hardly take any power and this thing could probably run it for a long, long time. 1,000 watts seems like a good size where it's not too overly big, but it gives you enough power for everything you need. Uh, well, right now the fridge is on, that's only doing 26 watts, but you could probably run that thing for like a month straight. It like basically takes no power. But I've left that uh, fan running for like 24 hours straight and it doesn't take anything out of these power banks. Oh yeah, really quick. I want to make sure that the vents are on fresh air mode because I'm thinking that a uh, little vent fan will just kind of pull air in and then push it out the front as long as the fresh air uh, flap is open. Because that's the thing with like sleeping in a vehicle like this, it gets kind of like, you know, stuffy and the air gets stale. But with that, it'll just kind of move air through. You could also like crack a window or like crack your sunroof if you want it to get a little extra airflow but yeah i wouldn't say this thing you know is like super powerful or anything but it's nice to have okay so the e1000 does have a little led light on there you just push that button once you push it again on and off i like it it's super simple it's kind of annoying with the ones that you have to push it a bunch of times as like sos and the stuff you like never use but anyways let's see how uh, bright this thing is Go ahead and turn out all of the lights. And it's not terrible. It gives you a little bit of light. Definitely comes in handy when you need it. And of course you can always charge up, you know, a really bright flashlight on here. But I will say it is nice having a little backup light. I just love how it's on and off. That seems to be uh, the deal with this whole thing. It's just super simple. You just press once to turn something on press it again to turn it off so next we have the bed itself i upgraded this thing um because i was sleeping on this like self-inflating air mattress and it fit okay but it wasn't very comfortable kind of hurt my back and this is a four inch memory foam mattress it is so comfortable and then i just have you know your regular sheets and comforter it's like it's like a home away from home and i kind of just cut it out to go around this uh little wheel arch and I stay pretty comfortable in here. And I also have a mattress topper on the foam mattress and it's a green tea memory foam. It's got the twin size, smallest as possible so I could get it as cheap as possible and just cut it to fit. Oh, also, did I mention I have remotes for the lighting? This is for the main lighting. You can change the color tap. And you can make it dimmer or brighter. Turn it off back on i like how it fades it's nice and this is an rf remote so you don't have to actually point it at anything because the controller is actually right here oh someone's coming up the road it's kind of creepy out here so i'm just gonna hop in the forerunner and so i kind of like this seat right here uh, I got a bunch of bottled water, but this is kind of a nice place to take off my shoes. And I also got my tools back behind there. And got a little impact and everything. Got some more shoes and slippers. And of course, I have a cover for the rear window as well. You can see in here like it's daytime if you're out there, but I can't see Jack. I just want like someone or something looking at me in the middle of the night with all these lights on in here. It just fits up there pretty well. Nice and stealthy. And we'll just turn off the ambient lights because those go into the front. And I just want to show you guys like how stealthy this thing is on the outside. And we'll just turn the lights down to like, not low, but like out there. Guys, it is nice having slippers when you're camping. <laughs> it's so dark. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a little bit of a light leak right there. I mean, you have to be at like the perfect angle to see it. But yeah, it just looks like black windows around here. Now let's check out the front, see if we can see anything through there. Yeah, you can see some light leaks in there for sure but you have to be exactly looking in the front because we have the blackouts in the side windows. I guess I could do a blackout in the very front windshield someday if I wanted to. 
or just put up a sunshade that would probably work good enough. Can't really see much. Anyways, let's come back in here, take off the sleepers, come up here, and I'm just gonna lock all of the doors. One reason is for people, like, could you imagine just being asleep and then having someone open the door? How scary and terrifying that would be. It's a lot better if someone's trying to open the door but can't. And then also bears, I think, can open doors. They're pretty smart. It's a nice little stealth camper here. But other than that, I have this little backpacking table. It works pretty well. It's kind of temporary, but it's got this uh, little net on it. You can put stuff. And then down here, I just have a... One of those car or trunk carriers. It's kind of hard to get stuff in and out of here, but it's definitely some nice storage. I got some clothes and camera equipment and all my uh, coffee stuff and things like that, paper towels and toiletries. And then back here, I have a couple of blankets. One is just a regular uh, Mexican blanket. Those are just kind of comfy, I like them. And then I have this 12 volt heated blanket, nothing does pretty good. Yeah, I don't think I really need it. However, we are about 10,000 feet above sea level, so might get a little chilly up here. Then stashed back here, I have a trash can. And I had a like a real basic one, but it was real floppy and it's hard to like keep trash bags in it. But I just got this one, which is a lot better. It's got these little sticks on the side that keep it from collapsing. And you can actually put trash bags in it. It's got these little magnetic snaps four of them and you stick a trash bag in there and clip them on and super handy and it's got like some storage on the side i have a whole roll so i can just swap them out i just think you lose like so much room with this uh, wheel arch um that we could kind of like use if we had a counter and a cabinet system over here and i also got a five gallon water tank that's gonna sit under here and supply the sink because i gotta make the counter um to kind of like fit everything that i want and i'm probably gonna have a drawer in here that like slides out as well i think that would be pretty neat and just make it easy to like organize everything anyways let's go ahead and make some food i got this little water kettle 300 watts so we're not gonna have any trouble running it on the jackery. I do like how the E1000 has a pure sine wave inverter, 110 volts. And that is definitely what you wanna look for when you get a power station. Make sure it's pure sine wave um, or else it could cause issues with like certain electronics like laptops and more sensitive stuff. But we just turn the AC on. And let's go ahead and boil some water. The fan kicked on. Definitely gonna wanna make sure we got some cooling room on the sides. And it looks like we're pulling about 318 watts. While we're waiting for that to boil, let's grab the food. That is actually on my roof box. I like how I can get out here without even touching the ground. I love good old roof box here. Hope a bear doesn't like climb on top of my roof in the middle of the night. <laughs> It'd be funny though, the whole forerunner shaking back and forth. Oh yeah, I actually forgot to talk about these uh, window covers right here. These two side windows were the only windows where the reflectix wouldn't stay by themselves. And it was always falling down. I had like popsicle sticks and stuff. But when I had everything off, I just put a bunch of button snaps on here and I have uh, lock nuts behind all the plastic. And these are just moving mats. So, I mean, Harbor Freight was giving away this size moving mat for like free. And then I just roll it up and I have some Velcro. Right here. I mean, obviously you can't see out of it right now, but super nice in the morning. You could just roll that up and look out the window or watch the sunset or something. And I actually have a uh, 5% on top of the factory uh, window tint. So it's probably more like two or 1%. It's super dark and it's carbon ceramic. So it won't absorb the sun heat as much. However, all the other window tint is uh, not carbon ceramic, but I should probably get some on there because that stuff makes a huge difference. This stuff really helps keep your vehicle cool. But you just cover it up and 
comes down and just snap it all the way around. I actually got my mom to sew some edging all the way around. I bought the edge and she was super nice enough to sew that up for me. And this one doesn't have it right now. This is actually the prototype. Okay, it's boiling. It was only 199, but we're at such high altitude, water boils a lot sooner. And it brought us down to about 92%. We got lots of power left over there. And you guys gotta try these uh, cup of noodles stir fry. They are so much better than the regular cup of noodles. This one's teriyaki chicken flavor. And let's let that sit. Oh my goodness, I almost thought I forgot a fork, but I had one. But yeah, since we're done with the inverter, we can just click that and turn it off. Because inverters will uh, consume a little bit of power, so you always wanna turn them off when you're not using them. But I do like this uh, little kettle. It almost acts like a thermos, not quite as good, but it'll keep water nice and warm. And since we have a refrigerator now, we can go up here. And grab some more food. I kind of like having the fridge up front there because it does make some noise. I had it right here, but it's kind of loud. But check it out. We got some shrimp cocktail. Nice, cool, and fresh cocktail sauce and everything. The bears are gonna love this forerunner tonight. Noodles are done. And of course I got a little Bluetooth stereo here. Play some music. And I kind of like this campsite because I don't have any cell phone service. All of the campsites I've been going to, even like on my motorcycle, I always get like cell phone service and it's hard to like get away from it. Now I'm not even tempted to like watch YouTube or go on Instagram or Facebook. Just out here in the middle of nowhere. So I had to venture out to use the bathroom and that forest is nice and creepy. So my phone is at like 17% power. So I'll use the last USB port. I don't have anything that's USB-C. Let's plug this into my phone and it's charging. So if you need any more USB ports, uh, it's fairly easy. You can just get one of these uh, car jacks to USBs. And I might have to get a splitter so I can still run my fridge and one of these as well. I think you can get one that has like an extra car jack and USBs like all built in. But the USB-C is probably going to be useful for some people, especially if you have an Android phone. But I could use another one to charge my flashlight. And then another one to charge one of my cameras. I have so much gear that I need to charge up. <laughs> especially when making these videos. But now I got the laptop out. So power that on. The battery on this thing does not last long at all, especially when you're editing videos. So it is super nice to have a big old power bank like this because this thing sucks a lot of power. Plug that in, turn on AC, and it says it's plugged in, so. It'll be interesting to see how much battery this uses on the Jackery. Right now we're at 91%, 71 watts, six around there. Here we go guys, I got the lights dimmed down and I'm working on a moto camping video. So I'll show you kinda a little bit of a preview of what's going on. Ah, it feels good. Summertime, finally. Oh, what? I'm gonna take a right here. straight up the mountain. Is this the end? If it is, I'm just gonna camp up here. <laughs> ah, why? <laughs> Well guys, 
guys, I've been editing for well over an hour now, so I'm gonna go ahead and save, and I got some good work done. Those are all my cuts. Still have a lot left to do on that video. And it looks like we're down to 80%. Not terrible. This thing does suck a lot of power. Well, anyways, guys, I think I'm ready for a midnight snack. How about some popcorn? You might be thinking, how in the world are you going to make popcorn out in the middle of nowhere? Yeah, don't worry, boys. We got a microwave oven. This is the real meaning of camping. Seven hundred watts, so the Jackery should be able to handle it. It looks like we're actually pulling close to a thousand watts. It's handling it though. Not bad. That only took us down about uh, five or six percent. I think we were at 79. This is so cool. We got popcorn in the middle of the forest. Yeah, this is fine. I don't even worry about it. Well, so far guys, I'm really liking this Jackery Explorer 1000. And I like how the backlight on the screen goes out because it's just not needed to have that on all the time. It came pretty well packaged in the box and it also uh, came with all the cables and stuff. I like how they included this bag um, so all the cables don't just get like thrown everywhere and you lose them. And it's got a standard 110 wall charger where you would charge it at your house. And here is the solar panel adapter. We'll talk a little bit more about the solar panel stuff tomorrow once we got some sunshine. I don't have the actual Jackery solar panels, but uh, this will work up to 200 watts. And they have like a special solar panel kit for it. And another thing is, according to the instructions, this has an MPPT solar charge controller, which is really what you want. It basically allows you to get better solar charging, uh, even in cloudy conditions compared to like a regular PWM. Uh, this is the car charger and some instructions. Kind of tells you how many times you can charge everything. Uh, weighs about 22 pounds. And uh, this uses a lithium ion battery. Uh, so it's not lithium iron phosphate and there's pros and cons to each kind. But if you're going to be using it a lot below freezing, you definitely want to go with the lithium ion. And also, interestingly, they give you the life cycles. So you get about 800 cycles uh, to 80% capacity. So after you've discharged and charged this thing like 800 times, which is a lot, basically going to be 800 uh, watt hours after that point. And actually, it's uh, 1,002 watt hours, so slightly more than one kilowatt hour. And here's the charging times for the wall charger, seven and a half hours. Car charger is 14 hours. Um, however, if you want it to get the 7.5 hours in your vehicle, you could install a pure sine wave inverter uh, and hook it up like on a relay direct to a battery and you could charge it with the wall charger in your vehicle to get the 7.5. Just a little tip there if you have the E1000 and you want to get some better charge time in your vehicle, I think they do this on purpose so they're not blowing people's uh, fuses and then they get upset at Jackery. Depends on the vehicle. Some, you know, have smaller fuses. This one can go up to 120 watts. And then here you can do two of their Sola Saga 100 watt panels. It's about eight hours, so a little more than the wall charger, but not much. And also depends on the weather. And of course, electric generator, because you're using the wall charger. And it tells you what all of the different little warnings mean. And of course, I wanna make sure I get my drone batteries all charged up. This one wasn't that dead, but I wanna make sure they're fully charged tomorrow because we're gonna go on top of the mountain. I didn't bring anything FPV. I thought about bringing my Cinewhoop, but uh, 
my main five inch quad that I use a lot finally got destroyed. <laughs> so I'm kind of working on a uh, six inch right now. Uh, it's gonna be a lot better for mountain surfing. Well guys, it's like 2.30, I'm getting tired. I'm gonna go to sleep. I didn't test out the heated blanket, but it's just too hot for that. I'll wait until fall. It's kind of like the fridge, like 30 or 40 watts, I think. It depends on what setting you have it on, but this mattress is so nice. It's like nicer than the old mattress I have at home. I might just like live in the Forerunner from now on. Have a good night. I'll see you guys in the morning. It is morning espresso time, and I brought the Wikeko Pico Presso. I totally forgot to bring creamer on this trip. I always forget something. Um, I don't really like sugar, but I like just a little bit of cream, but I'm just gonna drink it black. That's all I got. We taste more of the flavor. And in case you guys are wondering, I'm drinking some Wonder State coffee, organic off-grid, bold and roasty. The notes are bittersweet cacao, smoke and roasty. It's a super dark roast, but it's perfect. Since we're off grid and everything, um, I like the little bit of smokiness to it. Not everybody likes dark roast, but I do. Guys, check out this rock. It's a nice little countertop. Oh, we got the berries. Check that out. Those ones could be poisonous. I don't know. Oh, but look at this. We have a oh, little raspberry. Look at that. Is it those raspberries? Guys, that is a raspberry. As wild as could be. It looks like a raspberry. It tastes like a raspberry. It must be a raspberry. A couple more. I'll take those, thank you. Oh, so good. All right, what do we got? Some Reese's Puff cereal. Does anyone else just eat cereal straight out of the box? I've done that since I was a toddler. So we are at 57%, and the fridge is actually running right now, but that is not too bad. So I just have this uh, 12 volt fold out solar panel. Uh, it's not a Jackery brand. They have their own brand. Their solar panels uh, seem to be pretty nice. They are a little pricey, but I think it's worth it because my friend has one and he was getting over a hundred watts. But I did have to buy an adapter. So it goes from these like solar panel waterproof connectors. I can't remember what those are called exactly. And then it goes up to uh, this kind of jackery specific plug we're getting about like 43 watts or so but the sun is hitting it you know pretty good probably angle it a little bit better maybe get some more the only downside to like a solar panel like this charging it outside if i were to leave on my bike um, someone could just come by and you know scoop all this stuff up one thing you could probably do is uh crack the sunroof and then stick the solar panel on the box here and then just run the wires through there. As long as it doesn't like start raining too bad. Ideally, you gotta put your power station in the shade. You don't wanna leave it out there in the sun. Um, so you don't want that thing to overheat. But I'm gonna be getting things ready on the bike. Let's see if we can get up to uh, 60%. If you're gonna be doing this all the time or living in your vehicle, you're probably gonna wanna have a solar panel like 
permanently mount it to the roof. This roof box is a little big. This one's going on the van. That's why it's white and doesn't really match anything. Maybe I can try to find like, you know, a skinnier uh, roof box and then put a 100 watt solar panel next to it. They have these ones that are pretty long, but they're only like about 13 inches wide. But I was thinking I could build a rig for it. So it's uh, normally mounted flat right here. And then um, I can unlock it and then tilt it, you know, upwards. So that way, you know, if the sun's like over there, you can like move the vehicle around and get as much sun as possible. And then I'll have like an entry gland that goes through the roof and it's all waterproof. And so that way you don't even have to like worry about anything. It just automatically charges like right where it was. And then nobody can really steal it. And then you just have the ventilation fan going constantly to like kind of cool things off inside. But I think that would be a pretty cool idea. I'm gonna have about like three or 400 watts of solar on the van roof. Oh yeah, still nice and cold in the fridge. Definitely don't wanna leave this open too long. All right guys, we got it up to 60%. I'm just gonna put this back inside and take off on the bike. So I did save this location just in case I get lost. Vroom, vroom. All right, we're gonna go up Webster Pass. Guys, this looks completely different during the day. All right, here we are, kind of where we left off at the ominous lawn chair. Seems to be a popular road for bikes. Oh, that's kind of unfortunate. Someone just left a nice little canopy over here. It doesn't look like anything's really wrong with it. I don't, no way I'm going to try to stick that on my bike, though. Onwards to the top of the mountain, I think. See, this is like the perfect amount of rocks right here. Dirt's all red all of a sudden. Oh, check this out. This is cool. Nice little stream. Oh, that's a big mountain right there. So I'm wondering if that's red cone. It sure looks like a red cone. All right, guys, we're almost above tree line. Oh, that's interesting. Big wall of rocks. Must have been like some mine activity up here, but looks like we're going through the river. Nice and refreshing. Nice way to cool your feet down a little bit. Turn your air-cooled engine into a water-cooled engine. Ooh, I could have totally got air off of that right there. I like this road. It's just fun. Just enough challenge. 1970 spec suspension. And it's okay with me. Gives you more of a workout, that's for sure. Well, that's a nice little mountain view. Uh, and I'm not sure what people do when there's uh, two vehicles trying to go opposite ways. There's not enough room for two big vehicles. I mean, there's always like little spots like this where you can pull into. Seems like a pain. Let's get a little more rocky here. Wow. Best time to do roads like this is like between late July and like late September. So then after that the snow starts coming again. Just gotta do first gear. Chipmunk, so surreal up here. Ooh, 
nice little wind right here. Feels so good. I'm sure it's good for the little air-cooled engine here as well. Yeah, fam's all here. So yeah, I don't think I'm gonna try to ride up here. That gets like insane. But here we are at 11,963 feet. <laughs> I can't even read. It says do not enter one way only. So that was that road if we went the other way. That would have taken us up and around there. That's kind of cool. But anyways, the TW200's running pretty good up here. Everyone always like freaks out about the carburetor, like, oh, I have to rejet. Like, dude, I've never rejet this thing or even like really touched the carburetor. It just goes. I've ridden at sea level all the way up here and I don't have any problems, really. It runs pretty good. But anyways, guys, I'm probably just gonna enjoy some more riding, go a little further, see where that takes us. Then I'll just do like some B-roll. So I just want to jam out to some music and go for a ride. Yeah, it's funny. They were, needed a spotter and everything for that lifted forerunner. My forerunner stock, and I had the bike on the back. It went up that thing. Home sweet home. We're back down to 53%. It's not like hot or anything to the touch. And it looks like we got ham and turkey sandwich. And a seltzer water. Guys, I always put a strap around the rear tire just because it's not thin enough to fit into the rack. Right, we're pretty much ready to go and we are at exactly 50%. Car power in there, nice firm fit. And plug it in. It takes like a moment. There it goes. about 72, 73 watts. Plug that guy in. And might as well grab the last one for the road. Oh, let's get on out of here. And here we are, back at home. We were probably driving for about an hour and a half, especially when you factor in Going off road to the pavement and we're at 59%. We got almost 10% back in. And it was cool to 
get the TW200 back out and do some riding. I know I had a lot of fun on this trip and I didn't have any problems with the Jackery E1000. It worked um, just like it should. I was able to power everything I needed. Plenty of uh, power left to spare. But if you guys want to check this out, I'll leave a link down below where you can find it. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Peace out.